this builder because that air blow is not working. It's not got switched off. Um, I think that might be an overload trip light. I think that's the mains on light. Uh, so maybe the overload trips. Uh, the other thing this does regularly, like in every couple of years, it'll do it, is it'll blow the fuse for that motor. It's a 16 amp, little 20 mil fuse, 16 amp. Anyway, we'll get the cover off and have a look at the overloads, but I thought these were normally set to automatic reset. But then saying that they could be it could be in that cooling down phase and just just, just waiting to reset. Um, yeah, anyway, we'll get the cover off. Okay, that's the cover off. There's a slight smell of burning in here. I don't know if that's discoloured there. Let's get the old torch. Yes, it does look a bit discoloured, doesn't it? It does look a bit. And these are going to be original. So what's the date on this? 02, so 23 years old. Um, I don't think that resetted, so let's turn it on and see if the contact pulls in. Uh, contact is not pulling in. Maybe the contact has failed. Uh, THP, THP2, I think is pump 1 and pump 2, and LP, I think is Z lower. I don't know without looking out from the book. Uh, so we'll get a test out, we'll see if we've got power coming in, and then we'll see if we've got power on the coil, or maybe the coil's gone. But there's a definite smell of burning in that box you don't want. Oh, oh look at this, that, that ice band control is walking its way out. They do this, I don't know whether it's heating up and cooling down that does it. It's, uh, I'll turn the power off and poke them back in. But they, they walk their way out of these little grips, slider things that holds them in. And the other thing they do is these things snap off, the plastic gets put on they snap off. And then they fall down, so you have to, something else to watch for when you take the lid off of these. Sometimes it can be fine, you take the lid off and this thing flops out. Which again, is not ideal. Right, with the power off, um, we can try it with that one. Good, good. Not moving. So, coil's burnt out. And this is set on 8, 8 amps. So we've got uh, 6.3 to 10 amps, and then we've got a contact that will do 3 horsepower on single phase. And this is single phase, so I could go with, that's an 18, I could possibly go with a 12. Yeah. I'd rather go, I might as well go with a bigger one. I mean this one's done 23 years. Um, I'll take it off and we'll see what this one's rated at. But they do pull a fair bit of current then, because they, they, they don't start very quick. There's a lot of inertia from getting the fan spinning. It's just a giant, it's like a big turbo. Right, so we'll put a little marker pen out and we'll put some little dots on these wires so that we can um, uh, try and remember where they go back in. Okay. Uh, we're going with a 12 and not an 18 because it's uh, 2 horsepower at 240 volts which is what the old one was and this is 3.2 kilowatts at 240 volts and that was 3 kilowatts at 240 volts so it's the same spec so that's what we're going with and then we've put dots on there so we can one, one dot, two dot, three dots so our little system and we've got the old one if we need to refer to it as to where they go. Anyway, let's get that put in there. Oh, I've got a sunlight magnet on there, keeping it making ice while I'm doing this. Just got a nice little zap off of that wire there, which will probably teach me, until I forget again, to fucking test things before you start poking your fingers in there, even though you've turned it off. Uh, so we've had to go and turn off the tank, so it's obviously got a back feed coming in from the tank somehow. Um, 
Yes, 240 volts on that one, 39 volts on that one, and that gave us, I think we counted five zaps, so what's that, 50 cycles a second. Is that a tenth of a second we were getting a zap? Hmm, yes, anyway, less said about that the better probably. Test things people. Okay, these have a little pin which I've just cut off, which would be there, which would go through into that terminal, which would mean you wouldn't have to put that link wire around to feed the coil. We're not using that because it's got all its internal wiring, we don't want to get involved in how that's done. So we've cut that off and we're just going to wire it conventionally. Okay, that's done. Um, one dot, two dots, three dots, four dots, so that should be right. Normally open, normally closed, which is the same as on that one. <coughs> we've got live, neutral and loop wire. And then we've got a couple of loop wires in here because I think the wires burnt out previous. And that red wire goes down, which I'm assuming is the live. So that's probably live in, loop wire to here, and then live out, and the neutral just goes straight through. So we turn it on, see what it does. There we go. That one's on. Oh, that little plastic leg snapped off of that one, so we're about to move that board over. Eight amps, that's right on the limit. I thought the overload should be set to, so I might check the capacity in there, see if it's gone a bit weak. Yeah, it's probably worth checking. Because if it's pulling 8 amps and that's set at 8 amps, it's probably not good. Yeah. Okay, it's not the easiest of things to get to. I think we've got a couple of, I think it's a 30 microfarads, if I remember rightly. 30. So we should yeah, pop that off of there, it's 30 I think. Is that 35? It's a 35. Uh, let's get a test on it. So 30% low, so let's go see what we've got in the van. I might have to order one. That's something I was just might be interesting. Um, I was getting fed up with all these little off cuts of pipe I had in the van that might come in useful rolling about. So I've got this spirit level bag, which was about a ten tenner, I think. I think it was ten pound delivered. So I just put my little off cuts in there and zip them up and it'll do a 1200 level I think so what's one point was it or maybe even one point one and a half meter level um anyway just keeps all your little bits of pipe in one place might be useful okay don't, don't take up a lot of space anyway capacitors in that box there we're we'll not digging to it get the other stuff out of the way so we can get it out right I picked these boxes up cheap on uh, eBay. I think some of these like, from a tool shop that was selling them off. So they've obviously sold all the tools out of them, and then they didn't. You know, the, whoever's bought them didn't want the box. Uh, anyway, that's got all my capacitors in it. So we'll have a hunt through there, see if we can find a 35. Okay, had a hunt through there, and we we had a 30, and we had a five. So we could have made one up that way. Uh, then I found that one which they can be a bit of a pain because sometimes you don't have room to put the crimps on the top and then we found one with a cable uh, like a this, this Ducati so it's different brands but the diameter and the height is roughly the same and I think they sell a bit of foam packing at the bottom end of it so we get the saw out and cut that stud off they don't, they don't go any, it's just moulded into the plastic so we can cut them off and then we'll, we'll trim this back so we can get a tightish bend on there and then we've got the flex to go into our two Wago connectors. Um, of 
because they, they do go, you know, three, every three or four years these things will go weak, especially with the hours this thing does. So, and then we can see what the run current's dropped down to because it was running around 8 amps, wasn't it? 8.2 amps or something. Okay, got our new capacitor in there. See how that's all gone black, and you can see how the plastic's all melted where it's got hot. So that could be the coil failed, um, just a wire shorted out. Uh, maybe this jammed up because if they can't pull in, I think it'll it'll, um, it'll pull too much current through the coil. Then it needs the the iron bit to come in to make a magnetic field because this all the current going through the wire makes a magnetic field through this the magnetic field pulls that in that then generates a current and the magnetic field through this so you get a vol very you know a voltage going around inside this like a bit like a transformer and then the magnetic field that generates fights the one that this is generating and limits the current that can go through that with this the same with motors it's why they pull a lot of current when they're not turning um, Anyway, that's my kind of understanding of it. So, if you run a coil with nothing in the middle, it'll very quickly, like a solenoid coil or something, it'll overheat and melt very quickly. So, if this jammed up for whatever reason, it'll do this. Low voltage will do it, but it, if it had low voltage, you'd think some of the other ones would have gone as well. Um, over voltage would probably do it. Um, maybe it's old age, it's 20 something years old. It's done a lot of hours. Anyway, there we are.